As we've been talking about what's been going on with the summit, with what's happening in the Soviet Union, a lot of people are asking questions. Is there really a softening? Is something really beginning to warm up in terms of spirituality over there? Well, there's a woman in our next story named Jenny Gorduk. She knows from her own experience what life was like in the Soviet Union. Why? Because she lived there. She was a small child in the years immediately following the Bolshevik Revolution. And her Christian family suddenly faced life under an atheistic regime. Linda Volcano brings us her story. The Bolshevik Revolution, seven days that shook the world. In 1917, the Bolsheviks defeated their opposition in Russia and the first communist country was born. Jenny Gorduk and her family were Christians living in Russia at the time. But that was a problem because religion now had no place in the communist country. What Jenny remembers is being 10 and her teacher asking the class if they believed in God. So the children all said that they did not believe in God. Then she turned to me and then me out and said, uh, Jenny, do you believe in God? I said, yes, we believe in God. And she said, do you believe that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth? I was kind of taken back that she knew scripture from the word of God. And I said, that's what the Bible tells us and that's what we believe. Then she turned to the entire class and he said how stupid it was to believe in God when we know and science have proved that there is no God and the Bible was nothing but the fairy tale. But Jenny was not shaken by the persecution she faced. God, she knew that the God of her parents was her. real. I couldn't believe it because my little mind would wander off to that humble two-room log cabin where I could picture my mother down on her knees praying for her five girls and three boys and asking God to save them and to keep them true. And I knew down in my heart that my mother had God and that her God was not a silent God, but he heard and answered her prayer. And I've seen that in our family life, that God answered prayer. As communist oppression intensified, a five-year plan to equalize all Russian people was implemented. Because Jenny's parents, Olga and Dmitry Zernov, were classified as wealthy peasants, they were subjected to taxation aimed at stripping them of everything but the bare necessities of life. They were left with one cow in the barn, one horse, and a few chickens, and one pig. And uh, uh, we didn't have anything. Some, some of the furniture was sold out and everything that we had. Actually, a house with bare walls, eight children in the house, live as you please. So my father was uh, attacked that way. But you know, God is wonderful. He knows what he's doing, even though we didn't know. The word of God tells you that my, my mother used to quote this scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, the temple things of life. The hardships that the Zernovs endured were common to most Russian people, but it was an uncommon faith in God that sustained them. Jenny says she never heard her parents complain, even when things seemed hopeless. I remember this one summer we were out in the field making hay, and uh, it, things looked pretty bleak. But uh, a man came from the uh, post office and handed a letter to my mother, and we knew it was from the United States of America just looking at the envelope. And uh, as she opened the envelope, there were some long blue papers, and... Uh, uh, she read the letter, and she said, these are the tickets for us to come to the United States of America. She the said, tickets had come from relatives. It was a ray of My hope, but a small come. one. The Zernovs had tried to leave Russia before and were denied permission to leave the country because they were such a promising family. Still, Jenny's father went to the officials to ask once again. What he discovered was that their loss of material wealth was not really a loss after all. And as they looked toward the papers, now we were reclassified. We were classified as poor peasant. He was no longer a small businessman. All of us kids were thrown out of school. And it looked like very unpromising family. They said very little and issued the passport permission for us to leave the United States of America. All that they had lost had paved the way for them to come to America. So in 1929, Jenny, her parents, and her seven brothers and sisters left Russia for the United States. And like thousands of other immigrants, they landed at Ellis Island in New York City. 
with the promise of a new life in America far better than the one they had left behind. Driving through New York City with all those neon signs and the windows and beautiful displays, it was just like a fairyland. <laughs> we couldn't believe it, how beautiful everything was and plentiful of, of all things. And it, it was just unbelievable. But it was not the best time to come to America. It was during the Depression. So even though the family settled in Wisconsin with Jenny's grandparents, who had immigrated to the United States years before, it was God, not their relatives, that they had to depend on. But you know, the Lord took care of us. Two weeks after we came, my older sister got a job, housework job. And just two months after we got there, my brother uh, was given a job in a shoe factory. And then a little later, my father was given a job in a foundry. And right during the Depression, when people were losing jobs and talking about depression, we don't even know what that means. While we lived in the United States during Depression, we had better homes to live in, better clothes to wear, and better food to eat than what my father, what we had in Soviet Union. My father supposedly wealthy farmer and a small businessman. In 1945, Jenny married Stephen Gordut, a professor at Penn State University. And over the years, they have raised six children who have become doctors, nurses, teachers, and ministers, proclaiming the gospel here in America and on the mission field. And every one of them will tell you that when they quote Matthew 6:33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you, they're not just quoting scripture, they're sharing a living part of their family's history. No good thing would he withhold from them that walk uprightly. I said, walk uprightly, live good, clean life for the Lord, then no good things that is, that's good for you, God, will hold from you. Things that he will hold will be those things that are not good for you. But no good thing will he withhold from you if you walk uprightly and live for the Lord. Reporting for the 700 Club, wow. I'm Linda Bartholomew.